This is a brief overview of what a high-level design document might look like and some of the components that may be included. In the WAN design course from MNB Networks, we provide examples of full, high and low-level design documents showing the detail that would be included in such a document. We hope you enjoy the video. Let's run through some of the characteristics of a high-level design or a solution design document. We've got a few questions on the screen and we're going to break down why we need it, who, who would use it, reasons why we should complete a HLD and what type of thing it will consist of. So to start off, why do we need a solution design? It provides um, a structured approach in regards to the solution that we're actually going to be implementing for a customer. The doc it documents the objectives, constraints, and also the customer requirements, which is very important because we don't just create a design for the sake of it. We have to have a reason and we have to understand what that reason is and any obstacles which are going to prove as a barrier to success. Who will actually use a HLD? It will be written by a network or a solutions architect, typically, or a systems engineer but it will also be used and interpreted as a guidance document by a network engineer or a network designer who's implementing a project or responsible for writing the low-level design. The reasons why we should complete a HLD, even if somebody insists that we shouldn't or it's not worth it, um, th those reasons could range from some, or some of the below or some of the following, um, and even some other reasons not mentioned here. So without it, the detailed design or the low level design is open to interpretation, which means that we could potentially end up implementing or designing a low level design solution, which isn't really what the customer wants. So the HLD provides some guidance and guardrails for that without necessarily being prescriptive exactly how we're going to implement the solution. If we don't, follow a high level design and have some guardrails it can introduce and the you know for example the LLD does go off on a tangent then that can introduce some additional and unnecessary complexity complexity sorry and also additional cost and that is a result of redesign or reverse engineering things in order to resolve issues so what will the HLD consist of Architectural diagrams, customer requirements and constraints at a high level. It should be valid even if details change later. So for example, if you have to change a switch model or a switch manufacturer or something like that, provided the functionality is still available in the new model, the high level design should not have to then be amended as a result. Because once you go into the low level design phase, this is often where things can come out of the woodwork which are possibly unexpected and it can send the engineer down a path where they might have to tweak things a little bit and what we don't want to do is have to go back and rewrite that section or a specific section of the high level design. It's a structural, architectural and conceptual document that can be followed regardless of certain parts of the low level design changing. It provides direction on what will be required for the low-level design and sections of the high-level design should be moved to the low-level design to ensure that design objectives are understood and met by the project team. So to take this a little step further, um, there's a few different stages to the high-level design process. We have a gathering requirements stage, which we cover in depth earlier on in the request for information section, and how we can capture business and application and technical requirements from the customer. We then formulate the design relative to the solution and the components in scope. Highlight the impact on other services or segments to the network and infrastructure. So for example, we might only be upgrading the firewall or the edge wide area network routers, but it might have an impact on the entire data center. And there may be concurrent projects which are running at the same time as the upgrade, which we need to be aware of. After we've 
structured the document and we've written the document, uh, we lock the design in. So once we have completed the high level design, what we talked about a couple of minutes ago is the high level design should be locked in, signed off by the customer, whether that's internal or external. Um, and it shouldn't have to change again. It can be referenced throughout the low level design process if, for example, the engineer needs a reminder on what the objectives are of the project. So if we then move through the three sections in the table at the bottom, we have three main sections with many subsections. The scene set setting part of the HLD includes things like introduction and overview, executive summary, why are we doing this? Um, and that dovetails into the requirements, the customer's applications and the traffic flows and their operation. We then move into the existing and proposed design. So this would be what are we proposing as an architect or as a network design engineer uh, in order to resolve those business problems, accommodate for the customer applications and the customer traffic flows. So this would be more around um, the existing network architecture, the proposed network architecture, if we were doing any kind of site typing or categorization. So we might have one site type, we might have three site types, we might have five or more. It just depends on the customer environment. We would have some sort of connectivity diagram to show an outline on how things connect. And also, we may also talk about things like routing protocols and things that will be used, but we will not talk about at this stage in the high level design, specifically how they are configured. So it's a scene setting, then a proposed design, but at a high level. Um, and then we move into the services and migration part of the document, where we talk about very high level migration methodologies and processes that could be followed. So this could be for example, cookie cutter, one site cutovers, for example, which has a historical methodology in a wide area network design and migration. We also have to think about things like operational support. If we have new equipment, we might include bill of materials and pricing. We might include that or we might reference it as a appendix to the design so that we, with the, for example, the pricing changes throughout the negotiation process or the design process, if um, any new equipment is even being procured, then we don't have to constantly upload the new bill of materials and lots of line items into the HLD. So this, this is an example of a high level design and the point that I want to stress here is that when we talk about highlighting the sections which are relevant to the design, that might include something along the lines of, for example, if we are only upgrading these sites on the VPLS network, they don't really impact the, the, the operations of the internet or the L3 VPN or even the data center. However, what we do need to be aware of if we follow the green traffic flow line is that these sites will be talking to each other on the upgraded network, but if they need to talk to an MPLS or an internet based site or even user, if a user is coming into the organization, then we need to be aware of any changes that might be made um, in the data center VPLS routers. So we need to think about traffic flows. If we look at the purple line from this environment out to the internet or out to the L3 VPN.